The HairWorks viewer is composed of a few main sections. The menu bar, which allows you to save and open files. The view menu item, which can toggle certain other panels, such as the output panel. And also the help menu, which will take you to the documentation website and also tell you about the program. The main work toolbar, which gives you basic global parameters that you're going to use often while tweaking an asset, such as animation controls, wind controls, and your play transport. If we wanted to see wind on this character, let's move our light just a little bit, we'll turn on wind noise, and then wind strength. Now the wind settings are embedded in each individual hair asset, however since you generally want them to be synced up, it is treated as a global control in the HairWorks viewer. In a game engine this might be treated per asset. So if you want to control the wind direction, then you just hold shift and drag the mouse. And this will give you your, your wind direction to preview. Generally, it's good to turn this to zero before exporting your asset so that you can set specific wind parameters in your game. Then you have your main viewport, which is where your asset is. You have your output window located at the bottom, and it just feeds back various information about operations that the viewer is doing and how it's interacting with the APX assets and the fur project files. It'll also give you warnings for anything that you're doing that it doesn't like. And then we have our attributes panel. Our attributes panel is broken into two main sections, hair assets and display. Hair assets allows you to work on your various hair assets for your character and also allows for batch editing. And each asset has a series of import options. What import options allow you to do is be able to have various presets for different types of materials in APX files and also allows you to iterate uh, less destructively on your assets. So for example, if you wanted to import just a new groom onto this character, then you would select groom and turn everything else off and then import a file and it would merge it with the existing file. Each asset has its own set of visualizations When you're doing batch editing and you have multiple assets selected, you can see that the names of the attributes change. If there's an asterisk next to an attribute, this means that it is not the default value. If it's red, then that means both the assets you have that are selected do not have the same value, that their values are different. Our display tab has various scene preferences, such as custom MSAA, the up axis, navigation style, which is either Maya or 3ds Max, so that it is familiar to you as an artist. Various viewport controls, such as the HUD, which will give you stats and profile information. Some different rendering options for your display meshes. And your display meshes is what you load as an FBX to give your fur context. Uh, to help you make better artistic decisions like you would in a game engine. Lighting. So here we can visualize our key light and the color of the wireframe is going to also be the color of your light. By default we have a key light, fill light, rim light, and an environment light which is just a texture that you can load. And then we have our display meshes and your display meshes are the objects that were brought in with your FBX file. So in this case we have our mite and then all the eyeballs are different objects. There's a quick checkbox up here if you have a lot of meshes in your scene to just use skinned meshes. So our eyeballs were parented so those get removed from the display meshes frame right away. If you have a lot of objects this is a quick shortcut. And then we have materials for your display meshes. And this is a fairly simple material. It's only meant to help give your fur more context, again, so you can make more meaningful art decisions like you would in a game engine. 
or before you got to a game engine. Another handy feature of the UI is that it is fully dockable. So we can move the interface around to suit our needs. And also, there's a mode called presentation mode. And this is for if you ever need to do any art reviews at your studio or someone comes by your desk and you want to show them just what's going on in full screen. We hit play with the space bar and control X and that gives us windowed full screen.